years after training as a computer systems administrator, Freeman Adico developed a vision to offer a premium cloud computing and encryption solution that can be deployed anywhere in the world. This is African Port Business Forum, the place for thoughtful business conversations. I am your host, Philip Nyakbo. Adicnet, the company Freeman Adico created 10 years ago, is indeed offering a premium cloud computing and encryption solution. It is also now being recognized as one of the 20 most promising tech companies in Africa providing end-to-end -end cloud computing and encryption service. As he takes his turn on African Port Business Forum, Freeman Adico speaks as a successful entrepreneur from Ghana who braved odds to expand his business into four countries with clients all over the world. Here now is a thoughtful business conversation with Freeman Adico. What led you to start this company? I was trained as a systems administrator and a web developer. I specialize in cloud computing currently in e-commerce. So basically what I do is to manage infrastructure as a service, DevOps, backup, cloud backups, enterprise files you can share solutions on premise as well as encrypted cloud solutions for people. And so it got to a time that I realized that these services are needed and not only in Ghana, but the rest of the continent. And so I decided to uh, form a dignity to serve that niche market. There will be so many people with the background you described who haven't had the idea of doing what you've done or the courage it takes. How did you find the readiness? How did you find the energy to make that decision? To start business like this, you need some kind of experience. So I decided to work with uh, companies to be able to gain the experience to start my own. So I started with software companies and I worked in some other industries, energy, mining, hospitality, um, to gain some experience. It's a painful, slow process and because there are many companies out there that are doing something similar. But what I realized is that there's a particular niche in cloud computing uh, that most companies are not comfortable with. Uh, what I realized was that most companies in Africa are just scratching, as it was scratching the face of very deep solutions. And I found out that that is something that I can do very well because I've been in, in the industry for about 18 years, so I know what it takes to be able to execute those business. So what we are bringing on board is a crafted solution that is going to suit companies and, and give companies different uh, dimension of our computing than what they are already experiencing. You've already been in business for 10 years, uh, which is impressive in terms of the area you've chosen, cloud computing. Uh, what are your memories of uh, starting this business, given that it wouldn't have been easy, as you suggested? It's more of people understanding what it is. Uh, for example, uh, people are so comfortable with using shared hosting, for example. And so when cloud technologies were introduced, it was difficult for people to even understand the process and appreciate what is it that they will benefit from. And so these memories to explain to companies and individuals the benefits of utilizing the cloud and the cloud resources was kind of difficult. So we had to do a lot of work to be able to convince people that Utilization of the cloud is what is going to benefit their business as opposed to what they already know and their experience. Um, yeah, it was kind of difficult. And like I said, it was a painful, slow process uh, to go through that. But eventually, we, are, we managed to convince people that, yes, uh, if they utilize the cloud, it will benefit their businesses. 
and they themselves are seeing the benefits now. And one of the challenges being in business is the fact that you have to deal with your workforce. Uh, can you describe your workforce at the moment and perhaps the challenges you have or the experiences you've gained in making sure you're offering not just the service, but also a satisfying customer service? Currently, we have 50 workforce across the continents and some parts in Asia. The challenge really was to get the right people with the right expertise to be able to help me execute my agenda. It was kind of difficult because people generally in Ghana, uh, people have you know broad knowledge of technology, but specialization is something that people like. So for me, getting the right expertise to work with me was kind of difficult. So we decided, that's why we decided to go remote and that we could source talent from elsewhere in the world and still, you know, execute a business, uh, help our customers with the kind of solutions that we have. Initially, it was difficult, but now we are okay. Uh, we have the right expertise to be able to work with. Because our kind of service is a cluster solution, and we target companies who are serious about what they are doing, uh, for example, data encryption, uh, enterprise file sync and share solution, and implementing DevOps for them. We kind of need people with the right scale, and you have to pay them. And so we, we provide premium service. Apart from the team members, we have advisory board, people with expertise in different areas that help us in our day-to-day operations and a growth expansions and all that. They have us to be able to do that. So Freeman, you started in Ghana. Now, at what point did you feel you could establish operations in, in other African countries? Because at the moment you're operating uh, Rwanda, in South Africa, Nigeria. We're getting referrals from not only in Ghana, but other parts uh, in Africa. And so it was only natural for us to want to establish to those countries. We also realized that the kind of solutions we are providing, uh, it goes beyond just Ghana. Kind of, uh, because when we talk about encrypted cloud, uh, there are a lot of companies, it's, it has to do with companies who are really serious about data protection. And if we want to limit this service to only Ghana, then, of course, we'll be doing this service to the whole continent because thousands of businesses in Africa need this solution. And so it was only natural for us to want to expand to other areas and find out these companies who are serious about uh, managing their clouds and, you know, protect their data, protect their information, uh, to, to get close to them. And so we realized that we have to do that uh, and cover the rest of the continent with these solutions that we are providing. And I'm interested in knowing also the challenges that came with uh, you trying to enter other countries with your cloud computing service. The market is really not integrated. The fragmentations are quite difficult to deal with. And each country has its own peculiar situation. Uh, their processes, their legal issues. And so the challenge, you know, was there. But what we did that helped us was that in each of these countries, we hired a legal firm that seeks to help us with all issues uh, in terms of registering our business. And um, we use their services, and so far we can say that that has really helped us. By far, Rwanda is the best in the environment to drive because their processes were very similar. Uh, we were able to do things within six hours, get our business registered within six hours. But each of these countries that we operate in, they have their own difficulties. But because we, we follow the right process, hiring a legal firm to help us deal with all these issues, we are able to stay through somehow and uh, we are doing business there. So what about the African uh, Free Trade Agreement? When it's in full force, in what way do you think it will help businesses like yours? That uh, agreement is going to help the markets 
it will mean that I, I can be in Ghana and still serve companies in Nigeria, Rwanda, and elsewhere. So that is going to really help us, uh, those in business, to really serve customers across board. I suppose what we have currently that you have to go to each country and go through their processes and, and all that. So it's like there's a free movement of people, free kind of services across board to people. So we look forward to when it will be uh, fully implemented uh, so that we can enjoy this uh, arrangement as it is. Integrating cloud computing into your work is a fairly advanced way of doing things. How do uh, potential customers see it? Is that a system they understand uh, quite well? Cloud computing is basically the delivery of on-demand computing services from applications to storage and processing power, typically over the internet on a pay-as-you-go basis. So instead of companies trying to build their own data center or build their own infrastructure, companies can literally rent access to anything from applications to storage and from, uh, from a cloud service provider. You don't have to spend all resources to be able to build it. It's already there and you can just rent it and utilize everything that you want to use. And so the companies are seeing the benefit of it. Uh, gone are the days that we see few companies who are able to afford to build data center on their own. Now, the access is there. We, we deal in a multi-cloud money service solution. So we deal with public clouds. So platforms like AWS, GCP, Azure, Alibaba, these are complex platforms. So what we do is to take the complexity out of the equation and help companies to manage it. So companies will focus on their core services to their, their clients without thinking about what is happening on their infrastructure. So you can literally hire us and go and focus on your main business. That's number one. Number two, we provide encrypted cloud solution. Uh, there are Companies out there like banks, insurance companies, health sector, these companies carry a web of information and they want to find a way of protecting that information. And so we do data encryption, secure hosting and data encryption with military grid encryption. And, you know, in Africa, it's only a few companies <laughs> that are interested in that. And we know data is good now. And so whenever you have a data as a company, you need to protect it. So these companies fall on us to be able to implement a solution that protects their data. Number three, we also do enterprise fast sync and share solution on premise. Uh, many companies in Africa are using the public file sharing platforms like Dropbox for Business, OneDrive, etc. The question is, who is monitoring your data? So we developed software uh, that helps companies to share information remotely and privately on premise. And so you have control on your data, you have data governance. So if you want to subscribe to this service, we will give you a solution that you deploy on your own server on premise. And you will have the productivity and share information privately, as well as you wipe data remotely from any device that you suspect. And this is a game changer on the market and for companies to be able to do that. And as we also provide wide level solutions to ISPs uh, uh, who want to give their customers value added service. So you can have a backup solution, wide labeled, and you can give to your customer in your brand name to your customer. So, these are solutions that people think that it can only come from Silicon Valley, as it were. But we, we are African company providing these kind of solutions. So people are interested in what we are doing and, and they, they want to award us for, for doing that. Freeman, on your website, uh, you make a statement there that you believe work is a task, not a place. Can you explain that? Well, traditionally, if we talk about work, what comes to people's mind is to commute from your home 
to the office and come back. Go to the office and uh, uh, perform a task and come back. So we are saying that instead of going to the office, commuting to the office and perform these tasks, with the use of technology, these tasks can be performed at home. Whereas you are traveling in your kitchen and still achieve the same results. And for us, we are 100% technology company. And so we deploy this technology so that our staff can work from the, from the comfort of their homes remotely. And that's why we have distributed teams. So people, someone in Rwanda, someone in South Africa, someone in India, you know, all these will come together and perform a task. So when we have a task, what we do is we distribute this, each one with their expertise, and work in the comfort of their home to achieve the same result. So there's no need for, in this day and age, uh, it doesn't really make sense for me to travel, uh, let's say from uh, Tema to Accra to perform a task, whilst I can use technology to perform the same task. And that's what we're saying, that companies can utilize this and it benefits their workers. And we have a proprietary software that we've developed that will help companies to protect their data as well as work remotely. And so, you know, having been developer ourselves with the solution, we don't think it's necessary for us to be, to be wasting the time of productive time of our, our staff members traveling here and there to go to office and work. They should be able to work remotely. And so you've um, held on to this philosophy of uh, being able to work practically from anywhere now from uh, for the last 10 years since your uh, business has been uh, operating. Now, given all the experiences you've gone through, what would you do differently if you were to restart this business or you were to set it up as a new business today? What would you do differently? What I, I realized that most companies... When they start as a tech company, they want to do everything without having a proper niche for themselves. And I think I went through that process also, uh, trying to do everything. I want to do web application. I want to do this. And so they crowd themselves with a lot of solutions, services that uh, they don't really have real expertise. And so having learned from that, I think that if I'm starting today, that's the only thing that would change. Apart from that, uh, currently, we are providing a niche kind of solution, and that is what is helping us. Until we change to that concept, we're just basically a IT firm that focuses on everything, every solution. Just bring it, and we'll do it. But now, be able to streamline what we are doing, uh, cloud computing, e-commerce, and these are the ways we can help companies. Uh, I think that that's the only thing that would change or do differently. And it looks like you're, you, are, you are actually being noticed around Africa because apparently uh, you've picked up a few awards with uh, one coming up shortly as well. All this uh, came as a result of referrals from uh, the companies that are benefiting from our solutions. Companies out there are interested in what we are doing and for that reason they want to award us. So tell me about the award or rather the recognition you've received or are going to receive? Yeah, so it's about uh, top 20 most promising tech companies in 2020. And so and it's going to be given by Review, uh, CIO Review USA. And they, they've been doing that for the past 12 years in the US and now they want to have African edition. So they contacted us, look at the services we are providing and you know our case studies and they think that we we fit in to be part of that uh, top twenty companies uh, in twenty twenty in Africa. And that was the thoughtful business conversation with Freeman Article the founder of Adignet, a premium cloud computing and encryption service provider based in Ghana with offices across four African countries. Freeman Adico is fulfilling a vision to provide a premium cloud computing service including a custom end-to-end -end encryption now available anywhere in the world. 
I am Philip Nyakbo and African Port Business Forum is produced by African Port Media in Perth, the Silicon Valley of mining, energy and business. Subscribe free to our audio podcast if you haven't done so already. We are on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts or wherever you listen to your podcast. To find us on YouTube, just search for African Port Business Forum. Our website, africanport.com, has more information. And don't forget to check all of our previous interviews with exceptional guests, all on African Port Business Forum.